Well, we're going to move to our guest this uh, this uh, on on this Sunday night in studio with us. We have none other than Adam Lieberman, president of the Lieberman Group. Some background about our distinguished guest. Mr. Lieberman is a national a nationally renowned sales trainer, executive coach, and business consultant. He helps executives and companies explore the key elements involved in developing an effective and lasting sales team. With that intro, I welcome Adam Lieberman to the studio. Adam, how are you? Thank you. Very good. Very happy to be here. Thank you. It's a real honor and a treat. Well, Adam, uh, not sure where to begin because there's so much and the time will go by so fast, but let, let's jump right in. Whether someone's a sole proprietor or he's running a, 500, uh, a Fortune 500 company, sales is the lifeblood of any business. I mean, you, you've been training businesses of all sizes. What's advice you can give when they realize we need a great salesperson? Where, where did they begin? Great question. And we hear that all the time in the trainings that we do. People are always looking to expand and grow their sales force. Mm-hmm. Obviously, salespeople um, is the one aspect of a company that's not an expense. I mean, people want to cut corners in a company or, you know, uh, trim the fat, so to speak. You know, the last person that will be let go is a salesperson. They're the ones actually keeping the lights on and and paying the bills. So salespeople, um, you know, really have a golden ticket um, in in the business world for that reason. Um, And when people ask me, you know, specifically, how do you find a great salesperson? There's a very big misconception that salespeople need to be fast talking and quick on their feet and very personal and outgoing. While some salespeople clearly have those attributes, there are many, many top sales professionals that could be more soft, uh, soft-spoken and could be more low-key, perhaps even an introvert. Um, so they really come in all shapes and sizes. And the bottom line is there's some specific uh, characteristics that every successful salesperson has throughout this interview. I'm sure we'll touch on them, mm-hmm. but the bottom line is there is no specific, uh, you know, uh, shape or size or background a person must have to succeed in sales. Great insight, Adam. Um, next question is, and this comes up all the time, is there a difference in the approach between selling a product and selling a service? Ultimately, people buy on three main uh, specific reason why somebody, three main reasons somebody will buy a product from somebody or a service from somebody. People do business with three reasons with somebody. Either they know them, they like them, or they trust them, and hopefully all three. They should know you, like you, and trust you. And someone gets to know you and trust you and like you, there's a very good chance they're going to purchase something from you because they have a level of comfort. It's not all about the cheapest price. If, che- if a price was all the, the, the people cared about, then every sales guy would be out of a job. People just go online and buy everything, right? So the, the bottom line is whether it's a product or a service, people uh, want to speak to somebody. They want a human being there. And we'll touch, I'm sure, in terms of the new economy, how that's changed the landscape of salespeople. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, you know, a product or a service comes down to the same thing. Obviously, a service, you have to explain more than a product typically. But the bottom line is, the buying relationship, the buying that connection, and the buying that ability that they feel they can trust you and they know you and they like you, then you have a great chance of a successful sales encounter. So on that note, I mean, it's, it's I mean, when, when someone's making a sales call, let's say, wh- whether it's in person or by phone, should a person connect by emotions or by logic? Great question. You know, there's an old adage people say that customers, you know, buy an emotion and they justify it later on on <laughs> every logical reason why it makes sense or doesn't make sense. So typically emotion is a very big hot button and psychologists have proved this, you know, since the beginning of time that people buy an emotion. But, you know, you said a very, very, very good point when you're on the phone with somebody. It, it happens so often and every sales people can relate to this or people that aren't in sales can relate to this. Someone could be on the phone with someone speaking to them and the other person never says a word. And there's no uh, Skype and there's no, uh, you know, ability to see someone through an iPhone. But the fact is they never say a word that your person is speaking to. And you can literally hear the person either with you or not with you. It's unbelievable. You can speak to somebody on the phone and for 30 seconds, a minute, minute and a half go by, you speak with them. They don't say a word. But as you're speaking, you literally feel a connection. They're with you or they're not with you. And, and I prove this point time and time again because a lot of salespeople will find that success comes in streaks. They'll be successful, you know, in, in, in a burst and then it goes cold for a while, mm-hmm. which means that it was never the prospect, so to speak, that changed. The salesperson changed because when you feel better, you feel the connection with, with, with the prospect. 
So uh, again, on, uh, this is flowing so fantastic because uh, my next question is, is there a particular motivation tip for a salesperson? I'm not, uh, you know, I'm going sp- to split this question into two. One is how does a company motivate a sales force, which is really a, another animal. But then uh, an individual, how could they get themselves into that groove to get the passion, to get themselves going that their customers will say yes. Their prospects will say yes. You know, this, uh, go back to how a company motivates a sales team. There's, okay. you know, uh, th- there's always, you know, the tried and true methods of incentives and contests and things. Sometimes people, which I don't advocate at all and I'm not a fan of at all, sometimes people motivate by fear, you know, that they, they tell people if they don't hit certain quotas, then, you know, things, will, things, things won't look so uh, exciting for them. But the fact is there's a lot of ways to motivate a sales team. But the number one way to motivate a sales team, if you're the owner of a company, mm-hmm. you've got to get people a reason to believe in what they're doing. It can't just be a job. See, a salesperson, you know, you always see this all the time that a top salesperson could be at IBM and then be a sale, same person could leave IBM, be a top sales guy, General Motors, then be a you know, top sales guy at, at Coca-Cola. Obviously, cars and computers and soda have nothing to do with each other. Why could a top salesperson go from industry to industry? Because mm-hmm. the fact is, sales is 99% Sales, 1% is the product. And if someone's talented in sales, they can very quickly learn the product they can be around, which means a salesperson's always in demand. So a company has to recognize to keep a salesperson motivated and happy. You know, you got to really remember, they have to have a product they believe in. The single most important sale you'll ever make will be to yourself. Do you believe in the product? So a sales company, you know, needs to make sure that the company that they're, that, that, that they're presenting to the salespeople, something that they truly believe is something that warrants someone being there for a career, not for a job. In terms of a, just a couple of the yeah. second point you mentioned, in terms of a salesperson, how to keep their head in the game, so to speak, you know, it's about being a professional, being an amateur. You know, I deal with salespeople all over the country. And there are people that have been in sales for 20 years that sadly are still an amateur. People have been in sales for a week and are, are professional. And here's the difference. You know, to give the analogy, if you go to a Broadway play um, or you go to see, you know, somebody in concert, um, you know, they may have done that performance literally hundreds if not thousands of times. And people say all the time, they went to a Broadway play. The play could have been literally, you know, on Broadway for 10, 15 years, same actors doing the same lines day after day, week after week. But when you go there, you spend a lot of money and you plan this for weeks or months in advance. You want a person's A game. You don't care they did it a thousand or two thousand times beforehand. So a professional told and has told me this in the past. They are professional for one reason and one reason only. For every single performance, it's opening night. Because for them it's not opening night, but for you the audience opening night. So a salesperson, the reason why successful people succeed in sales, I've been to so many organizations and companies and businesses and sales teams and sales forces, you can never ever tell if a top sales pro is having a quote-unquote bad day, he's always in a good mood. He's always fired up for one reason only. If you get rejected and you say had a deal, let's say I dealt with a guy in sales and perhaps he had a big commission on the line and he worked hard on the deal and the last minute the deal didn't work out. Let's make it up. Let's say he lost a $5,000 potential commission. Well, the next person you call has a chance to earn a commission. Most amateurs... This is very important. Mm-hmm. Linger on to that thought. We do it in our own lives. We get ahead. Start, someday you, you have a day starts off a certain way and things linger. A pro knows how to cut that off. Because if you don't cut it off, you didn't lose $5,000. You maybe lost $10,000 or $15,000. Right. So a pro is able to know when I have something that doesn't go my way, I'm right back at him. Because my next prospect, he wants opening night. He doesn't care that I just got hung up on. Call reluctance. Let's talk about call reluctance, right? Every salesperson's nightmare. How does someone deal with call reluctance? There's a, lo- there's a lot of ways. I mean, obviously, it goes back to the same deal breaks before. People don't like to be rejected. Although you need to be able to handle rejection, obviously, no one in the right mind wants to proactively be rejected. Um, there's a couple of tips that I've taught over the years. One thing that was pretty effective is as follows. You know, if people um, can break down their sales presentations to a number. For example, if they know for every presentation they make, say they make 10 presentations, um, on average, on balance, they make one sale. So you can make 10 presentations, you're going to make one sale, just to give simple numbers. Mm -hmm. If you know for every sale you make, again, to keep it simple, you're making a $1,000 commission. You make 10 presentations, you get one sale out of 10. On that one sale, you're making a $1,000 commission. Again, round numbers. 
If you look at it a little differently, you say, you know what, I know that if every presentation I make, I don't know which one's going to buy, maybe number one, maybe six, maybe seven, maybe the tenth guy. But if I know on average I have to present ten times to get one sale, and that one sale brings me a $1,000 commission, then in effect, for every presentation I'm making, I'm making $100 for the presentation. So what sales pros know is say, it doesn't matter whether you say yes or no. Of course they want the yes. Mm -hmm. But they know ultimately my only job is one thing. I've got to give you my opening night performance. Whether you buy or don't buy, it's one out of 10. But I know when I complete my presentation, I gave it my opening night, I'm earning $100. Not zero for a no and not $1,000 for a yes, $100. Therefore, my core reluctance changes because I don't care whether you say yes or no, I'm making 100 bucks. So therefore, the more I can call, the more $100 I'm making, and that changed the psychology and the attitude of a lot of salespeople. Adam, is there a best time to make a sales call? Hmm. Any tricks on that? Is it the morning? Is it the afternoon, midday, weekends? I, I, any tricks on that? The, the, the tricks is, listen, uh, uh, you know, obviously if I say it right now, then every salesperson will call during those times and, the, and now and that becomes the best time be it's happening right now. But I, I think what I, what I found is as follows, and you touched on it earlier, that, that, that a time is the only commodity, the only asset a salesperson has. So I teach every salesperson one powerful technique. I never waste a phone call. So if you're calling somebody up and you get a receptionist on the phone or you get the gatekeeper of the executive and you're not effective in getting the person you want to speak to on the phone, I never waste a phone call. I always ask for the person's name. So if you're calling a company on the phone and uh, the person you want to speak to is not available, before you say thank you, goodbye, mm -hmm. I always say thank you so much and what was your name, please? And normally they'll give you the name. And it's very important data. The second thing I ask is most people, most salespeople say, well, if you know Charlie's not in, when can I reach him? So most people will say, as a gatekeeper, receptionist, or someone that knows the salesperson's calling, they'll say, "Well, I'm not sure," or you "Just right. try your luck," Fudge. or you know, or uh, you know, any times uh, as good as any. So I ask a different question. I say, "When is Charlie never available?" <laughs> because then they'll always tell you, "Oh, he's never in between this time and this time." Then you just reverse engineer the time that he's actually going to be there. That's pretty cool. But then when you get the person's name, which is very important, you call back the next day or the next week. And instead of saying, hi, Charles Smith, please, you say, good morning, Sally. It's Adam Lieberman calling. Ah, Charles, please. So you never want to waste that phone call if the person's not in. Get as much data as you can. Adam, we all know, I, I, and, and I don't want to say it's the elephant in the room, but maybe it is to many people. We touched on it earlier. Let's face it. Salespeople have to deal with rejection, right? They're on the phone. They knock on doors. And sometimes the phone gets slammed on them or rejection. We talked about a call. We talked. Still, any particular tips and tricks or advice that someone could just pick themselves up and forge ahead? One thing and one thing only. And you must understand the one adage. And if you can own this, I've seen it time and time and time again. Over 25 years of doing this is one thing. Every time somebody rejects what you're selling, they're not rejecting you. It's not you. Don't take it personally. People just say no. And there's a th billions of yeses out there. But the only way to get the yes is to literally come back the next phone call like it's opening night. Because the person you're calling is going to be the yes. Let me tell you what. If they hear that you just got rejected in your voice and they hear you're down, that yes now became a no. So the yeses are out there. The only out there. Remember, when you get a yes. I give this story all the time. You know, I knew someone growing up that had a brand new car, and they came home and they said, "My gosh, my car is amazing, brand new car." But look what happened. And I look at the car, and I see this big dent on the hood. And I go, well, "How'd you get the dent?" They go, "Oh, it was at the supermarket, and someone very inconsiderately, inconsiderate, very someone that was very inconsiderate, let their shopping cart glide down and it dented my brand new car on the door. And I couldn't find." any ding on the door, I saw this big dent on the hood. I said, how the shopping cart flip over onto the hood? They yeah. go, no. I was so upset at the ding, I took my fist and I punched the hood. <laughs> now, you couldn't see the ding, you only saw the hood. What's the point? That sometimes uh. it's not the first no that gets you down. It's the yes that you blew that really is, 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 is the issue. Mm. So you keep rejection in perspective. It was one call. Listen, every professional athlete heard it from every coach since they were in the locker room from high school if they lose a game by big numbers let's what it's our next game it was one loss if you let the loss fester the game after game it's a disaster 
You've got to cut your losses at the first loss and you go on. And that's the key from an amateur to professional. Adam, it's an incredible treat to have someone of your stature and some of your background and talent with us on Mind Your Business on 77 WABC. Any final thoughts as we approach the close? Any th- final thoughts for our audience? You know, I, you know there's, there's always tons of things to say about to, to, to have someone increase their sales, why they should enter the sales profession. I believe anyone can be successful in sales. I believe sales is the one occupation out there that will forever be, you know, economy proof. Um, mm-hmm. A good salesperson is never out of a job. And they have to, you know, find the most important thing for a salesperson to find a product you believe in. If what you're selling right now, you would not by yourself we not recommend to your friends and family you know perhaps you'll find a different product or service to sell because you must believe in what you're doing is 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 something right now that can benefit people can help people if you do that the sky's the limit 77 wabc radio presents mind your business hosted by founder and president of bottom line marketing group yitzhak Safless. mind your business focuses on business and marketing strategies for success 